how to assess a post trabeculectomy bleb. Here you can see uh, we're just going to highlight where the bleb is. So this is the bleb which we will see. The important thing to see the difference between these two areas that you've got these vascularized blood vessels over on the sides. While in the area of the bleb, you see it's more of an avascular, so there are no scleral vessels. The reason for this is because we've used mitomycin in this patient. The area of the trapdoor is over here and the flow and the sutures are over here. I tend to use one suture is a releasable suture which is tied over here, but uh, it goes in and passes through the cornea over like this and I try to pull this suture in when out after about a week's time. Let's move forward and uh, let's see how we assess this bleb as a routine. When we go, we need to shorten that slit beam and then in order to see if this is a cystic bleb, you can do transillumination. So here you can see the there is transillumination. This is the slit beam which is coming in and this is the area of the bleb which is transillumination illuminating that tells you that is an avascular bleb and that bleb is actually formed as well which is showing over in that area now if we keep moving forward and looking at that video what we'll do is reduce that slit size and that actually gives you the details of the Bleb. Here you've got the slit here you're giving you this and this is the thickness of the slit anteriorly while this is the floor of the bleb which you're seeing over here. So this is the actual amount of bleb height which you're seeing in this patient. This is going to be maximum in the center and this is going to be gradually going to thin out as we go in the periphery. Let's see how it goes. So we move this. We go on to a higher magnification here you can see that thickness moving as we move that area so I clear that area and for you to see better and you can judge that slit as you're on the sclera there's no thickness and now you can judge for yourself you can go from the other side and actually see the bleb on the other side as well so that tells you how thick a bleb is whether it is functioning or not. The next thing probably what you need to see is if there's any C dial positive or not. I've already shown you before this is the depth of the interior chamber which you are seeing in this patient which is supposed to be narrow in the periphery but if it was a flat chamber post-operatively you will be seeing more of this in these patients. When you move in from this area to the central area and on look on the other side to check the depth and then you can obviously see the central area of the capsule. This is the capsular opening and uh, this is the optic of the IOL which you're seeing and this is the red reflex or, and this is the haptic. So you're seeing through the red reflex of the or retro illumination of the lens. So you're making the slit lamp come in the center and you're looking at it through that. So I'm clearing that again and let's see what we have next. So you can do a broad beam. The pupil is dilated, is not upgrown. The other thing which you want to see is if there's a patent peripheral iridectomy. If somebody's had a bleb, usually you dilate the pupil after a trabeculectomy. And here you can see this is a cup disc ratio, which we're showing you again. This is a cup disc ratio on higher magnification and this nasalization of the blood vessel. And the cup disc ratio is about 0.8 or 9 over here with inferior notching. And there's nasalization of these blood vessels on the nasal side. Then you look in the periphery of the retina, looking, uh, asking the patient to look down. Here we see a choroidal detachment, which is visible over here. If we move around in this picture, we'll see that area of choroidal detachment clearly seen. And this is actually the area of the aura serrata, which you are seeing in this patient. 
So this is the Oracerata and this is the pars plana of the ciliary body which you are seeing in this patient. And if we move forward, clear this and move ahead. So this is the ora serrata and this is, this is, these are very small choroidal detachment. Obviously, sometimes you see uh, anterior chamber shallowing, overfiltration of the blood, especially in patients who have a choroidal detachment. So that is part of a standard glaucoma post-macalectomy examination, which you should do in order to get an overview of what is happening with the patients. Thank you very much for watching.